So good morning. It's a great honor for me to be here as a speaker in Institute of Landscape. Landscape. And uh, my name is Wang Xiangrong, come from Beijing Forestry University School of Landscape Architecture. Besides teaching and uh, research, I, always, I also do a lot of practice. And uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce my research and uh, pra practice in the field of uh, city nature. The topic is natural system outside and inside the city. Uh, as we all know, China is a huge country with a lot of Populations for thousands of years, the land has brought up a huge population. But not all parts of the China have good natural conditions. Uh, for example, in East China, in Taihu Basin and uh, Ningxiao Plain, for hundreds of years, here is one of the richest area in China. But before that, here were many lakes and uh, marshlands, and uh, it was not it was not suitable for agriculture and the human settlement. However, over the past thousands of years, people have been trying to control the flood, contract the borders, develop agriculture, and build settlements. With the population growth, the cities appeared. And the picture shows the structure of Taihu Lake Basin. After thousands of years, people's labor work, agriculture production, and the settlement construction. And uh, uh, people transformed this area into the granary of China. In this area, the lakes, the pond, ponds, and the canals, network, villages, and uh, roads, all the elements compose a uh, system. And the nature and uh, the man are in balance and in harmony. And about the end of the 17th century, a painter, Zhao Bingzhen, painted in together 46 pictures. Here we can see only 10. The picture described the uh, settlements, agriculture, sericulture, and the weaving in this area. From the picture, we can see the relationship between the water networks, the powders, marbles in the deck and pond, villagers, and the, also the people who are working. And uh, these are photos of the 1980s, the Taihu Lake Basin and uh, also Ningxiao Plain. The landscape is shaped by people transforming nature for, for thousands of years. The house should be built on higher place and should have convenient traffic. So all the buildings are arranged, arranged along the canal and thus form the uh, water towns. And here all the elements, ponds, powders, uh, villages, and uh, uh, rivers, all the elements form a whole system. And one of the prosperous city in this area is Suzhou. In Chinese mind, Suzhou is uh, one of the paradise for Chinese people. The Suzhou is located in, the, in here. And uh, surround the city, there are hills, lakes, canals, and borders. And the city is famous for its canal road system, which is also called double chessboard structure. And uh, the structure is consistent with the borders outside the city. That is to say, if we move the, all the buildings in the city, move it, and the structure of the cities is actually the same as the structure outside the city. So actually, Suzhou is uh, Powder city, the structure outside and inside the city are the same. And uh, another, another city in this area is Hangzhou. It's a very famous and beautiful city in Chinese. Hangzhou is another paradise for Chinese people. And uh, in the history, regardless of what changes have taken place in Hangzhou, the natural system outside and inside the city retain unchanged. That is, between the mountain area and the city, there is a lake, the West Lake. The lake collects the rain water of the mountains, and uh, the water is uh, uh, the function of the lake is uh, uh, during the rain season, collect the flood, the rain water, and uh, in the rain season, traces and it uh, can irrigate the farmland. And the water flows through the canal into the city and, and again through the canal into the city to the big canal and then to the big river. So from the map in different uh, period of the history, we can see the natural 
systems, the mountain, lake, and the canal, and the, and the river, all the elements compose the system. And uh, the picture describes the uh, ancient Hangzhou. So the lake is located between the mountain and the city. Actually, there are a lot of lakes that is by the lake because the China, the landform is so in the, uh, higher in the west and the lower in the east. So a lot of cities are located in the east side of the mountain and the people build the lakes between the mountains and the, and the city. And the lakes, all the lakes have the same similar function. So collect the rainwater from the mountain and the flows, the water flows into the city and uh, the water is also the uh, water resources for the uh, citizen and the water also for the irrigation and all the element mountain lake and the cities and rivers all compose a system so even the Chinese city are not very large Asian city not very large about the location selection and the build theory the Chinese is within a very large scale so the every element outside the uh, city and inside the city are composed together. And uh, we see another city in this area that is Changshu. The, we, we see also the mountains, the lakes, and, and the city here, the water net composed together and uh, from the outside of the city to the inside of the city and then to the, to the river, big river. And, uh, uh, so we see the city wall. The city wall climbs over the mountains and uh, a part of the mountain is inside the city and another part of the mountain is outside the city. So the natural, natural inside the city and outside the city are connected together. Yeah. And uh, we see another very small town in this area that is uh, Yongjia. So we see also here the city wall climbs over five hills and the man can climb over the hills and have a good look to the outside of the city. On one of the hill here, there is an academy and we see the building of the academy are um, integrated with the rocks, the trees and the wall together and um, man feels that the whole mountain is an academy. So actually, a lot of Chinese artificial constructions in the history are integrated with the nature, from the building, the hydraulic works, the uh, agriculture, or even the cities. So Chinese ancient cities are full of natural spirit. But the landscape are being changed rapidly right now. These are pictures out, outside of Suzhou. I just uh, took uh, uh, from the high speed train, high speed train last month. Yeah. And uh, the satellite photos reflect the, the urbanization process of the Taihu Plain in the past 30 years. So the urbanization rate of China was 20% in the, in the year 1979, while it was 55% last year, and it increases by 1% every year. In other words, there are more than 50 million people entering into the city from the rural area. So the natural system outside and inside the city began to separate and the nature began to become fragment. I think there are four main reasons. First, the expanded city occupies the surrounding natural and semi-natural spaces. And uh, number two, different from the historic cities, the cities of today have no longer developed in related to the agriculture system in their surrounding areas. And number, number three, the attitude toward the nature and uh, has changed from relying to modifying and interweaving randomly. And uh, number four, more and more man-made systems have replaced the natural and the semi-natural systems. According to the National Health and the Family Planning Commission China, in the next 15 years, 230 million rural residents will move into the city or newly constructed towns and cities over the, yeah, yeah, in the next 15 years. Such scale and speed of urbanization have never 
happened in the human history, I think. And uh, in the background of rapid urbanization, how to ensure the equal security and uh, build the balance between the nature and uh, history, just like our history cities. Based on my own research and the practice, I put forward the four approaches, preservation, restoration, transformation, and uh, integration. So the first important approach to build a complete natural system outside and inside the city is preservation. In China, when the urbanization rate increases by 1%, there will be about 2,000 square kilometers land occupied. And now people almost influence every corner of the country. Some human activities cause the fatal and the irreversible consequences. And uh, we should protect the the ecological, sensitive, and uh, vulnerable areas. This is our project in Lanzhou, the ecological plan for the city, a linear city along the Yellow River. We first put uh, forward to protect the wetland of the Yellow River and uh, another eight uh, drainage, uh, drainage ditches here to build a fishbone eco network for the city. And then we extend to the network to the mountains surround the city, that's the outside of the city. This continuation and the complete uh, natural system in and outside the city will improve the city's climate quality, conserve water, and provide habitats for the wildlife and uh, recreation spaces and the pedestrian system for the citizen. And uh, the second approach to build the healthy natural system is restoration. Today, so China, our uh, environment is damaged a lot, yeah, certainly today, and in the future for a long period, uh, the landscape architects will and uh, take a responsibility to repair each land destroyed by us and uh, to restore their specific eco-function and landscape characteristics. I'd like to take another example plan project of us in 2001, 2001. We studied the ecological restoration planning for the West Lake in Hangzhou, which is the south of the city. At that time, the lake here faced a lot of problems, mainly about the water pollution and the crowd tourists. And this map shows uh, this area the relationship between the mountain agriculture, water network, pond, lakes, and cities 100 years ago. The West Lake is here, Hangzhou city is here, and the mountain is here. But over the past 100 years, the water area at the foot of the mountain here were gradually occupied by farmlands, fish ponds, villages, and uh, other facilities. And in the year 2000, at the foot of the mountain area, this area, the farmlands were abandoned, and the garbage can be seen everywhere. Environment pollution was ex extremely severe. And we use GIS to analyze, to analyze which area can be recovered into the water again. And uh, what should the water area look like when we restore it? We studied a lot of ancient pictures about the West Lake in Hangzhou, especially about the, the, this area as a foot of the mountain area. And uh, finally, we recovered 80 hectares of water area in this in here as a foot of the mountain area. The water from the upstream of the lake from the mountains is purified by the wetland here and flows into the west lake. And this greatly improves the water quality of the lake. And uh, you can see the picture after the uh, project is finished. Uh, at the foot of the mountains and lakes of agriculture, that is the tea fields and the villages, all composed together again, just uh, as uh, historic period. And uh, I think another meaning of restoring the West Lake is to integrate the lake, mountains, 
the wood night here and the wetland here and all the natural elements here to composed as a whole complete system. And this also improves the natural system of Hangzhou city greatly. And uh, another ecological restoration field is the regeneration of the lost landscape. So West Lake of Hangzhou is here. In the history, there were two lakes similar as the West Lake. But uh, in the future, these two lakes were disappeared, total lost, because of uh, reclamation. And uh, this caused uh, frequently uh, in, uh, flood problems. And uh, in the year 2004, we began to plan to try to restore the lake here, this lake, the Xianghu Lake. The area is almost as uh, similar as uh, West Lake here. And uh, in addition, we also planned the Xianghu New Town here with the urban planner together. The lake will be the future central park of the new town. And uh, this is the uh, lake after restoration based on, on our project. The lake enhanced the ecological system of the entire region greatly. And uh, you can see the lake, the landscape, has close relationship with the surrounding mountains. And uh, there are islands and uh, decks, embankment, and uh, also uh, temples around the lake or on the mountains. And also, around the lake, there are villages. So the lake, the situation, the atmosphere is uh, similar as the historical lakes of China. And uh, the third, I think the third approach to build a city natural system is landscape transformation. Landscape is dynamic for landscape architect. Landscape transformation should construct the relationship between the past and the future and maintain and establish the integrity of natural system. So here is another project of us also in this area in Taihu Lake Basin, the Wetland Park, and the Ningxiao New City District in Shaoxing here. The site is a typical unit of water network, lakes, powders, and uh, villages. And we studied the historical systems, natural systems of this area, and uh, planned uh, urban area and wetland park based on the structure of the original powders. So also the area has been transformed from the agriculture use to the city, to the urban or wetland park. The structure is still in a complete continuation and the natural system is a whole, the whole system outside and inside the, the new town. And uh, I'd like to take our opportunity in G9 to dis illustrate the fourth approach, that is integration. In the historical, historical city in China, all the elements are integrated as a whole, just as I said. And uh, the medium of connecting every part of the city is the natural system. And now it seems that our city today in China are very disordered and have a lot of problems. However, behind these problems, we have still opportunities to solve them by means of landscape planning and design and constructing a complete natural system outside and inside the city. And G9 is a very beautiful northern city. There are lakes in the city and also the springs in the city and uh, surround the city, there is uh, the moat. But uh, in the year 2006, 10 years ago, all these natural elements are separated. And uh, our plan connects the lake together and uh, extends the lake to the city and uh, also we design a uh, pedestrian system and uh, boating system along the moat surrounding the city. And this is uh, 
the picture after our project was finished and you can see the lake, the, the, the city connected together and you can even see the South Mountain in the far distance. And uh, this is a lake, the lake and the city belong to together and uh, now people can go along the moat or even by ship along the moat to, to surround the lake seven kilometers long and to, to go to work, to, 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 to have a leisure. And uh, it's this project greatly improves the ecosystem in the inside of the Jinan city. But uh, nevertheless, I think it's not, imp it's not enough. We want to extend this system to the outside of the city. We find this picture, it was painted by the greatest Chinese artist, Zhao Mengfu, 700 years ago. He stand in the city center and uh, take a look uh, to the north. He saw two mountains and wetland and farmland in the far distance. And uh, fortunately, these two mountains are still there. And now we are planning a very big scale project for the city of Jinan. We try to connect the south mountains here, the moat, the lake, the city canal, and the small river here, and the one mountain, Huashan Mountain here, and another mountain here. And in between, there's a Yellow River. We try to connect all these elements, nature, together to form a system that is the city's green infrastructure also. And the system will improve the quality of the ecological, of the ecology of the city and provide open spaces for the citizen. And uh, I think this is my last slide of the presentation to the summary for keeping the balance between the city and the natural system and ensure the, ensuring the ecological security, the natural system outside and inside city must be connected as a whole and the preservation, restoration, transformation and the integration of landscape as the approaches to achieve this goal. And finally, I want to show this picture. It's not Hangzhou, it's Beijing, but uh, it's actually the same as the similar. In the west, there are mountains, and the city located in the east part of the mountain, and uh, at the foot of the of the mountains, there are lakes. The water goes through the canal to the cities, and in the cities, there are artificial lakes, ponds, and uh, hills. All the elements composed together to form a whole system from inside to the outside. And the man and nature are in harmony and merge together. That is the uh, idea of Chinese human settlement, set, settlements as Chinese landscape architects, we should not forget this experience. Thank you very much. <laughs>